safe to say I love El Hazard the Magnificent World. Music, characters, the adventure, the entire Kickaboo. Very entertaining series that I already saw three times in its entirety. Well, over a day after I upload my review, I found a used copy of its sequel, El Hazard 2, and a copy of The Wanderers as well. Since The Wanderers was a television retelling of El Hazard, I decided to go for the sequel. And while it was shorter, and there were some more cons than the first OVA series, I did however enjoy the sequel as much as I did watching the first OVA series. Keep in mind, even though it is a positive review, there will be some spoilers since I have to go back and reference the previous OVA. Therefore, for those who haven't seen the first El Hazard and want to, you might want to wait until you finish watching that to continue with this review. So let's get started, shall we? El Hazard 2 The Magnificent World is a four episode OVA series in 1997, and it's a continuation of the first El Hazard OVA series. Since the fall of the Bogrum Empire and the defeat of the Shadow Tribe, they got their asses whipped. Peace has been brought to the world of El Hazard. Makoto takes up on studying the ancient technology of El Hazard because he's a scientist that way. Nanami Janai opened up a new restaurant. And Masamichi Fujisawa and Miz Mishtao of the Three Muldoon Priestesses are getting married. Oh snap, someone getting married in a fucking harem anime? Unbelievable. However, on the night of the ceremony, Fujisawa gets a case of the cold feet and leaves the Kingdom Rastaria, which does not bode well for Mies. So Makoto and the gang, along with Princess Fatora, go out and search for Mr. Fujisawa. Meanwhile, Jenai, Queen Diva, and what's left of the Bugrams discovered another demon god weapon by the name of Kalia and reactivated it in hopes of conquering El Hazard. Both plots converge on a location that keeps itself cloaked in the desert. See, inside this mountain cloak is a lushful jungle, where a second Ephorita and Yuba, another scientist with the same abilities as Makoto, reside in. However, in that same location holds a dark and powerful weapon called the Trigger of Destruction. So, like the previous series, it's obviously action-adventure comedy. Characters are still familiar and recognizable to anyone who has seen El Hazard before. I'm going to list off a few cons before I go into the pros. First off, Jenai's role diminishes greatly and practically disappears in the middle of the third episode once Kalia took complete villain status role. Second, Princess Rune Venus does even less in this series, and by less I mean only narrate in the first minute of the first episode, and that's it, get your paycheck. And thirdly, I really don't like Princess Fatora. Yeah, see, originally I was going to do a rant on anime characters I hate, and Princess Fatora was going to be on that list. See, when she finally debuted in the final episode of the first OVA series, she pretty much established herself as being the least likable character in the entire series. She's a stuck-up egotistical princess, go figure. She treated her armor cat Ura like shit and tries to take advantage of looking like Makoto to sexually advance on Shayla and Nanami. At least it establishes that women can be just as perverted as men can be. Oh, and she was indirectly responsible for wrecking their end airship at one point in the second series. So, in my book, she's less likable than the psychopathic totalitarian high school student who commands humanoid bugs. But, on to the plus sides. We still have the other characters, and a second Ephorita that is apparently part of a production line of artificial demon god weapons created by the ancient El Hazar technology, which sheds some light about the previous Ephorita in the first series, yeah. The more you fucking know. Also, another thing on the plus side, the human action is still there, and Makoto is no longer in drag. Well, except for that one time in the hotel in the first episode. Oh yeah, and Kalia is a villain? Woo! She's a complete and total psycho. Even though she was originally constructed as a tool for revenge, she seems to take pleasure and destruction and suffering. Ooh boy, yeah. So, as a villain, she's a big step up from Galias, the Bugrums, and Ephorita when she was used as a weapon. I mean, look at her! Look how crazy she is! 
The art and animation is done by AIC still. However, while the animation was still pretty damn good, I noticed a complete shift in the art's direction. Therefore, the second OVA doesn't look the same as the first OVA, and possibly it looks even downgraded. Therefore, it took some time to get used to. Also, it looks like they had a different animator for the opening credit sequence too, for whatever reason. Uh, that being said, character designs don't change too much outside of the new clothing they have. Makoto's barely cross-dressing, but the uniform he wears in the first episode and last, complete with earrings, still makes him look a little more feminine than he should. So everyone is wearing a different costume, except for Janai, he still keeps his Shinonomi high school uniform, and he puts on some sort of goofy bug armor that he eventually ditches at the end of the second episode. Also, one animation I highlight I want to point out is when Eferita starts beating the shit out of Kalia with her own staff. It was amazing to watch. Which was a smart thing to do, I mean I keep suggesting that idea because one of Kalia's powers is that she can actually absorb energy. So I was like, why don't you just beat her physically? So that's why I like Eferita even more, even though it's a completely different Eferita. The music in El Hazard 2. While it has the same composer, and therefore the overall style hasn't changed, it mostly uses a new soundtrack, and the only song that I was able to recognize from the first OVA was Iferitsa's theme. The opening theme song was pretty good, not as memorable as the previous theme song, but pretty good. On the other hand, the closing credits music was pretty damn catchy, and I can actually sit through it compared to the previous credits music. Now for the English dub, there really isn't that much to say because the entire voice cast from the previous El Hazar returned to their respective roles, it still has some quirky lines and moments, Jedi still refers to the bug rooms by Marx Brothers names, etc, etc. So glad that part stayed the same, cause I said before, El Hazar's dub was really damn good. Overall, El Hazar 2 did suffer a case of sequelitis, the art quality changed, it was only four episodes long, and Princess Fatora is a character. However, that being said, it was still a fun and enjoyable watch, and if you have seen the first El Hazardo VA series, give the sequel a chance. I don't think you'll be disappointed. I hope you don't be disappointed. And as for those who haven't seen the first El Hazardo VA series, what, what the hell, man? I, told, I said that in my first review, and I mentioned that in my underrated anime list. Give it a chance. Come on. Come on. Now to move on to other matters. In my previous review of Ayane's High Kick, I have made the subscribers play a guessing game on what the next two reviews were going to be next. And I am going to reveal one of them today. I have put two clues on what the review is. It was a recent anime about one to two years old, and I have talked about this anime before, outside of my own channel. Only one person was able to guess, and that was Mitsuhide the Vagrant. My next review is going to delve deep with the undead. It's going to have zombies, it's going to have some fan service, it's going to be all types of bloody gory action. My next review is going to be High School of the Dead. Until next time, Darkscreen217 signing out.